Yama, what you got? Beautiful, beautiful. Let me see you now. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Here we are in Jamaica, the market basket of the 18th century British North America. Spectacular island. Everything is fresh. We're cooking some fantastic recipes today that were eating in the 18th century and still today are served on every family's table and every Sunday. So come with me for a taste of history, Jamaica style. I was taken on a tour of Jamaica's Bluefield southern coast by some of my Jamaican friends. Welcome to Bluefields, the most beautiful place on earth. Jamaica was inhabited by the peaceful Arawak people before the Spanish, led by Christopher Columbus, discovered their world in 1494. In 1655, a British naval assault on Jamaica captured it from the Spanish. Who conquered uh, Jamaica away from the Spaniards? That was uh, Admiral Penn and General Venables. The assault was led by none other than Sir William Penn, whose son William would make the Penn name immortal. And then the English started occupying Jamaica, starting their own little farms, their own little estates. This was a, a castle with the defense mechanism, if you will, right? Because yes. they would have to cannon from here. Had cannons here on the rampart, mm -hmm. and uh, in case they were being attacked, they'd have the tunnel for, so they could run from tower to tower. Once the British arrived on the island, they quickly set up plantations and imported thousands of slaves. This established the triangle trade, where slaves were shipped from Africa, and then the ships would travel from the West Indies, especially Jamaica, to British North America with precious goods, including tropical fruit, rum, and spices. So this is a pimento tree. Pimento is the Jamaican word for the spice that most of the rest of the world call it allspice. The reason for that was that everybody in the 18th century cooked with pimento. A lot of money must have been made here because spices were very expensive. All this trade and commerce not only drew the British to Jamaica, but also the pirates who wanted a share of the wealth. So all the pirates used to come here to refuel their boats. So the water they need, lime juice, the meat they would need on board, everything they would need on board they collected in this bay. So did you find any treasures? Oh yeah, we found a lot of treasures. Anchors. But any gold you can tell me. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chef Walter is on his way. I'm going to make him something special. I have my fire going. I'm going to put some water on to boil. Sorrel is a flower that only blooms during the Christmas holiday. It's unique to Jamaica. It's our holiday drink. goes well with our, with our traditional fruit cake that we serve on a Christmas season. We'll bring this to boil. As soon as it's boiled, we'll remove it from the fire and allow it to draw. Junior. Hey, hi, Chef. 28 years I'm coming to this great country. It's the first time I get a sorrel and a fire. How is it? Excellent. We've been doing this together for many, many years. So. Cheers, Doc. Right, salute. Jamaica has such a bounty of many different recipes. We couldn't show them all today, but we're going to show one of my favorites right away, which is the breadfruit. Most people don't realize that this fruit actually will taste like bread, henceforth breadfruit. What I'm doing here, I'm just going to take the stem out, and then I make a cross in the bottom, so the heat can penetrate the breadfruit and it will be fully cooked. Put it right on the fire. Here we go. There we go. Red fruit coming up. <laughs> How many times have you made this together, huh? All right. All right. While the breadfruit is uh, roasting away nicely, we're going to start a dish that is for most people a little strange because it uses uh, 
what we call byproduct of the goat, such as head and feet and intestinal product. It's called manish water, and it's a kind of an interesting soup because it's served normally in Jamaican weddings and other gatherings. The goat head is a, not an easy thing to cut, but the flavor that it creates in the soup is absolutely spectacular, as you will see in a bit. So, Junior, yeah, come man. set so, me up. To start, Walter, we're going to saute some vegetables. It's kind of bring out the flavors. That's some vegetable oil. Yeah. That's onion. Don't use it all. Fresh garlic. We want to sweat it down without any color, correct? Right. We don't want any color in there. And that's some fresh thyme, thyme and scallion. Scallion or green onions. Some root vegetables, yam, yam, carrot, turnip. We have some chocho here, some green banana there. Chocho and figs. This is the goat. the goat head goes in there. All right, here we go. We saute that for what? For about a couple of minutes? Yeah, we're gonna sort it a little bit, sweat it down a little bit, and we're gonna add in this water. While this is getting ready, maybe now is a good time to turn those spread foods. What do yes. you think? Let me see if I can get in here. Perfect. Once all the green is looking like this, then they're all ready to come off the fire. Get all the way to bite into one. We're now in Mento country, and it has a rich heritage with Africa, uh, the revival movement, the Maroons, everything that is rural of Jamaica. And we are the only country in the Caribbean that has Mento, comes directly from our African roots, and we are going to dance, so let's dance. Manish water is almost completed. Now we want to check for the heat, meaning scotch bonnet and salt. Let me try it. Junior. How much do you want? I put a teaspoon in there. Okay. You know, we like it hot. We let it sit for a little bit, and now Junior is going to start on the spinners, yeah, which what makes that soup absolutely perfect. Walter, what we have here on the spinners is just simple flour, salt and water. It's like we're making boiled dumpling. The rest of the world calls the dumpling. Here in Jamaica, you call it spinners. Yeah. Tell me why. Well, it's just because of how we shape it. You spin it right off the hand in the pot. There That's it. The other thing that people don't realize, the spinners, because it's just flour, salt and water, once you put it in the soup, acts also as a thickening agent because the flour that cooks, cooks out of it makes the soup just absolutely velvety and perfect. Come on, let me try how we did with our pepper and salt. So I can finish with my spinners. When making this recipe also, you want to make sure that you use all purpose flour. Cake flour or, or the blended flour would not work. And that doesn't take any time at all for the spinners to be done. A couple of minutes uh, in the boiling soup and be ready to taste it one more time. Make sure that all the ingredients are in harmony. And then we serve it up. This is real bush cooking, Walter. I'm telling you, <laughs> you and I. It's not the first time we cooked in the bush, no? <laughs> All right, right Walter, this is looking really, really good, man. One more in there, one more little. Give me some, some six stuff. Okay, there you go. Let's see how well we did. Mm. Mm. Spectacular. I'm dying for this bread food. Is it ready yet? Yes, man, right away. Look at that. It's a nice one. Somebody would see that at home, you think it's burned. No, this is the way it's got to be. <laughs> We're going to peel it today, but you could also scrape, scrape that. It, yeah. yeah. Going to be a beautiful bread for yeah, right Yeah, it's a nice roasting bread for this one. You can tell, day. yeah. What I'm going to do here, Walter, is just take the heart out, mm -hmm. right? And you can see that this bread fruit is roasted nicely. So this part you don't really heat. So now we're going to make some wedges. You can put some butter on them. I've been waiting for this all day. This is going to go good with the hacky and saltfish mm. and the mackerel rondo. Mm. <laughs> nice and gooey. Let's get to know an 18th century food. 
This is the Czech food, which is a relative of the durian that you find all over Asia. It's very rough on the outside, but it's nice on the inside. You see, that, that's, that's what you eat. Mm. Jackfruit grow on a really, really big tree. And people literally watch their jackfruit so that neighbors don't steal it. You know what? I believe that because it's so beautiful and the flavor is so spectacular that I would want to steal it myself. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, favorite, favorite pepper the world over. The Scotch bonnet is a hybrid of the habanero peppers and powerful as you can believe. But in Jamaican cooking, essential. You know, yep. jerk is authentic to Jamaica. Without the Scotch bonnet pepper, there's no jerk. A lot of Jamaica would use this as a side side order. Every time they bite something, they'll take a bite of the Scotch bonnet pepper. It's really, really big here. I'm so excited. Now I'm in the land of chocolate. That part goes all over the island's wild. It also has a very milky texture yeah. inside yeah. when it's ripe. See? Touch that Walter. It's a little slippery. That's when you know it's ripe. And when you roast it, the whole neighborhood can tell that you're roasting chocolate. This yeah. is what you'll get. When it's done, yeah. Finished product. So when you want to make a tea, just grate that. And, and draw it like you'll do a normal tea. George Washington and Thomas Chevron will write in their purchase orders where they want to get from. Is it Caracas or different South American countries or Jamaica? Jamaican chocolate has always ruled. Very, very strong in flavor. Tell me about why goat is so preferred for this recipe. Goat goes away back, Walter. It's a traditional Sunday dish here. It's good for parties, good for, for dance. There's no wedding without curry goat. You want to marinate your goat and um, at least the night before you're ready to cook it. We take the intestine, the head, and we make the manish water. Now we have the, the body of the goat that we're going to chop in small pieces and cook, turn it into curry goat. Most farmers save their goat for the holiday season, like now, when the price is nice. <laughs> When you eat that uh, curry goat like this, with the bone splinter, you want to be very, very careful. The flavor is not the same if you take it off the bone. There's no. a lot of goodness and flavor on the bone that you really want to get into the recipe. To marinate this, you need all the fresh ingredients. Put some salt. You don't want to put too much salt. Chopped onion, freshly chopped garlic, curry. We have our fresh thyme, a green onion or scallion. A little pepper in there for you. Yep. And now you put it away for until you get ready to uh, to cook yeah, it. Man. It's and nice, then, nice yep. and colorful. And the flavor already yeah, comes right away. Oh, but of course I smell <laughs> it already. I'm ready to eat it already, never mind smelling it. <laughs> the Dutchie is hot, so Dutchie we're gonna show them hot. how it's done. Oh, nice and hot. It's a slow cook, you don't want to get it too hot because the curry will burn very easy. No, we're just gonna cover the meat with some water. When we check it, we could add some more if it, if it get dried out. But All right. right now, just, just to cover it, yeah, you hear that sizzle? Yep. And we'll allow that to boil. Approximately for a young goat like that, 25 minutes? Maybe a little bit longer. Maybe a little bit longer. This curry goat is always teamed up with uh, rice and peas. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So while this cooks away here, we'll get started on the rice and peas. All we have to do later is put the root vegetables in last moment, with a little tomato last moment, and we're ready to serve. I have here my red peas. If you notice here, the, the color of the peas, that's, that's how it's going to finish. The rice is going to absorb that nice red Beautiful. peas color. Put some coconut milk mm -hmm. and some fresh spice and herb. This is just for the flavor, not really the heat. I put the thyme in like this. As soon as the rice is ready, you could just pull it pull up. Pull it up. Fresh garlic, some fresh onion. Now we can put our rice. Fantastic. This is normal long grain rice. Covered and 20 minutes later yeah. we're in business. As soon as we can see the rice, then we'll reduce Done. the fire yeah. and have it steam. Oh, come on, Junior, we're gonna finish this dish. Look at that. What a firepower we have here. What we got? What do you got for me? We have some root vegetables, some tomatoes to give it a nice sweet flavor. Let's check your rice and peas here. Oh yeah. All right. See? Nice and colorful. What we're gonna do now that we're gonna turn down these fires. To keep it let it simmer can a little you bit. Turn down yeah? this fire? Cool. All right. Walter, I've already made the festival dough for you. Um, I'm going to roll them and put in the pot, and then I'll tell you what's in there meanwhile. That's a deal. Like two part flour, one part cornmeal, some sugar. You want that sweet flavor. A little vanilla, a little cinnamon, uh -huh. um, and milk. 
Let me yeah. tell you. Let me tell you something. One of my favorite. Well, I have many favorites. One of my favorites is to have a nice fish tea with a festival on the side. Huh? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it great? My favorite is a jerk pork for the festival. Well, of course. It goes without saying. See, nice golden color. Yeah. That's when they're ready. You pull that off there. Sometimes they get me too much cinnamon, you know. Yeah. And I don't like that. You tell me what about this one now. Oh, Junior, you're good. That's why you. Eh? That's why you with me on a taste of history. <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> That's why I'm always with you. That's it. Most people don't realize cooking chewing is a very sensitive procedure. It's not about heat, it's all about flavor. Fine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You know, I'm a big connoisseur of chewing, and I want you to know you make the best chewing of Jamaica. What is your secret? Well, our secret is a simple, all natural seasoning, and we put it down to marinade for a couple of hours before we put it on the grill. Tell me, what is your technique in cooking? I see you use sweet wood for the top. Yes, we use sweet wood on the top. It's these sticks on the top for flavoring. And on the bottom, we burn the coal outside with pimento wood and a wood named log wood. And we get good charcoal on the bottom gotcha. and get heat from it and it come out very good. Any idea how many people you serve today here? Well, over 500 customers. Every time I come here, I gotta stop at this place. I love the food here. Why do you think that everybody talks about border chewing? The food is very good. The staff, they are very customer friendly. They know how to treat customers. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It was great. Thank you. And let's go eat. Let me have a quarter pound of pork, a festival, and some bread food. I already got my beer. I can hardly wait for it. <laughs> All this time talking about it, I'm actually going to get it. This is jerk sauce. We made the ketchup. Real hot pepper. Yeah, look at It can't get better than that. There's no way. It's cooked perfect. Moist, has great flavor. You can tell the natural ingredients that he uses and the great variety of wood. That's gotta be the best jerk I've ever eaten. And I'm sure it's the best jerk in Jamaica and maybe the world. Only in Jamaica, all the jerk is the best. Most people cannot envision ever to eat a chirik pork or chirik chicken without some bami on the side. Bami comes from the cassava root. That's what the cassava root looks like. And you see it, when you peel it down, it is very, very, very starchy. In the early days of Jamaica, during the plantation era, taro root and cassava root were really engineered, if you will, to get bigger and larger to feed the enslaved people but it has maintained itself in history and it's still a very, very favor, a flavorful dish. What Junior is doing right now, he's grating the cassava root and then he's gonna squeeze the liquid out of it. This is actually a piece of burlap, yeah, right? Yeah. And what we're gonna do here is just remove the juice from the cassava. And that's what's used for starch. So that's the start. What they normally do is compress this and then sun dry it. The bami itself doesn't have a lot of flavor, all right? So what we do, we soak it in some milk, flavor with some cinnamon, some sugar, and some vanilla, a little bit of salt, right? And then deep fry it. And it don't take a lot of time to do. As you see us cooking here on the open fire, the temperature control is my foot, if you notice that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, yeah. what, what do you call it in the bush, what do you say? Push the wood up. Push the wood up. <laughs> push, push the wood up, from more fire, pull them back. Pull them back, yes. Another favorite Jamaican dish is the mackerel rundown. That's a mackerel that is salted, soaked, pulled off the bone, and then done in a coconut reduction. Here, Junior, I got the mackerel in my hand. What do you got right. for me? What we have here, Doc, is um, the reduced coconut milk. Mm -hmm. right? And this is why it's called rundown. It is, it is reduced until it, it starts to separate. So what we have here is, some, again, some fresh um, onion, um, tomato, some some sweet pepper, a little scotch bonnet pepper, some thyme. And we're just going to saute that quickly in the um, reduction. Go ahead. This is a really quick dish. And then we had some um, some mackerel. That we pull off the bone. Yeah. Soak them good. 
What do we have to check for, Junior, for salt and pepper, or is it all good to go? You don't need to check for any salt. You got so much You can salt adjust with, with a little black pepper, but there's so many salt in there. In the, in the that salt, You micro. don't really want to add any more salt. All right. Once the coconut milk is reduced, you take another two meats or three meats just to, to add everything else. And you want the nice, vegetables completely? Nice and crisp. Gotcha. Right. Well, let me try it here. Not too much salt. Yeah, you taste the, the scotch bonnet pepper. Flavorful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Flavors are in harmony. You notice that? They blend so well together. This is going to be so good with the breadfruit. <laughs> Actually, I eat this with rice and peas, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> in 1770, when Aki was first introduced in the shores of Jamaica, I'm sure that nobody envisioned this was going to take over this island by storm, and today it's still as popular as it was ever. Matter of fact, is the national dish, aki and saltfish. And I'm here with Junior one more time. Junior, what's so important about aki and saltfish? You tell me. It's everybody's favorite, Walter. Everybody's favorite. What we have here is, is, is a combination of the dried codfish, the haki, um, some fresh vegetables. This is actually what the saltfish looks like before it's clean. So because it's cooked, it's easy to handle. What I'm going to do, I remove all the skins to so clean that up properly. Then make sure there's no bone. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. The Aki came on those shores in 1770 mm -hmm. and the catfish came over. Why? Because the ships came empty to Jamaica. Yes, that, <laughs> when the ship come to Jamaica, it used to go back with, with sugar. So it was okay. But coming back, it used to empty. So it took a longer time. Then they say, okay, what can we use as a stabilizer, won't get spoiled, and we can then feed the slaves? Because salted cod lasts indefinitely. Forever. Forever and Forever. ever and ever. So there's also a very interesting story about the haki. Other Caribbean islands would not eat that. I don't know. The important thing about haki is that you must wait until it's open. It looks like this. Naturally open. Naturally open. On the tree before you, you, you pick it. Once it's open, you Pull the seed out, these little red spots in there, you need to take them out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, Junior, why is it called widow food? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> why is it? It's called widow food because if you serve it to your husband unopened, guess what happened? You become a widow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once you clean the hockey water, then you'll blanch it in, in salt water. Right. It's a quick blanch though, you quick want it al dente. You don't want to cook it too much. Yep. Alright, what we have here is some oil. We're mm -hmm. gonna get a nice sizzling. And again, some fresh vegetables. Amazing, see that? Oh. Alright, we'll just throw in a hockey now. What surprises me that many people that come to Jamaica got hooked on it but can get it no place else but Jamaica. So therefore you have to come back all the time to get it here, but nobody else has it. You know, I don't like to cook with anybody but you. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Jamaica's national dish, aki and saltfish, in its gorgeous surroundings, to bring you a taste of history.